Assessing for publication bias is one of the most important things to be done in the meta-analysis, but most people do it incorrectly. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how to assess for publication bias and to correct your estimates for publication bias using both point and click software and code. Now, I'm sure many of you are familiar with this so-called evidence pyramid. And on the left, we see the most common evidence pyramid. And on the top, we see meta-analysis. But when there's publication bias in meta-analysis, evidence can be distorted. The main pyramid that we see here is on the top, the meta-analysis of registered reports. Now, registered reports are, are pre-approved before data is actually collected. And regardless of the results, the studies are published. And this eliminates publication bias for these studies. And because publication bias is eliminated, what that means is we have accurate meta-analyses. So what do we do if our studies haven't been a registered report, which is the majority of work at the moment? There are ways you can actually uh, correct for this. But like I said before, most people do this incorrectly. Typically, when it comes to publication bias, people will construct the so-called funnel plots. And sometimes people will actually eyeball these funnel plots and go, well, this funnel plot is not symmetrical or this funnel plot is symmetrical, therefore there is no evidence of publication bias. And of course, this is really, really subjective if you're simply eyeballing a funnel plot and looking for symmetry. Uh, on the left, we have a funnel plot, which typically would be seen as symmetrical. And on the right, we would see a funnel plot, which is not symmetrical. And in the majority of, or in many studies, you would actually see a lack of publication bias confirmed only because of a visual inspection of these funnel plots. Uh, there's an alternative to this, a more objective alternative, and that is running Egger's regression test, which is a formal test for funnel plot asymmetry. Uh, for this particular example, we can see that this test was not statistically significant. So um, at the very end of the scale, you have people who are concluding a lack of publication bias due to a visual inspection of a funnel plot. Then the next step would be people who are saying there's no publication bias due to Egger's regression test. However, even though this test is objective, it still isn't an accurate measure of publication bias. And the reason for this is that Egger's regression test only measures small study bias, which can include publication bias, but it also includes a whole host of other issues as well, which are related to smaller studies. So if people are using Egger's regression test as a measure of publication bias, this is not accurate. And hey, I've done this in the past myself. Um, I didn't know this because that's what we learn in textbooks. And that's what a lot of the software that we use actually says it is a measure of publication bias. So we're going to jump in uh, using the meta-analysis modules in JASP, which is free. And we're going to look at ways that we can actually measure and test for publication bias, um, but also adjust our effect size estimates for publication bias. Let's jump in. There are a few important measures that we're going to be using for this meta-analysis. Uh, first is authors, and um, just so we can know which study is which. And then we have also calculated a measure of effect size, which has been calculated uh, via the number of participants here and the effect size here, which is Pearson's R. And you can do this in different software. So there are online calculators that you can do this, or you can do this within R if you know how to use R as well. However, there are lots of online calculators that are very straightforward to use to actually calculate your effect size. And also um, this variable here, which is the effect size standard error. Uh, some meta-analysis software requires effect size variance, um, which we've also calculated here, um, but the effect size standard error is what JASP uses for its meta-analysis. So we have the data here. We're going to click on meta-analysis, classical meta-analysis. Click on that there. Okay, so effect size, this variable here, we'll move this across, and we have our effect size standard error, which we're going to move across here. Now, there are various methods that you can use in order to calculate heterogeneity when you're doing a random effects meta-analysis. The most uh, common is restricted ML, and we're going to be using that for this analysis here. So we've done this. 
And okay, we have our stats. That was very quick. We have our test of heterogeneity, which was significant. So that suggests there is um, significant heterogeneity. And then we also have our effect size estimates. Now, what's easier is if we actually create a plot. So let's make a plot. We'll start off with the forest plot, which shows us each of the individual effects in the studies. Oh, what we can do here, we have study one, study two, study three. Um, we have a variable for study labels. So let's add that in. Authors, we'll do that. Put that in and then it'll update. So that's why it's handy to have a uh, variable which includes study authors. So that is updating and doing its thing. Okay, so this is a little bit easier. So we can see that there is a range of studies um, and the studies which have larger sample sizes tend to have reduced variance and they also have a greater contribution to the overall summary effect size. So if we go up here, we can see the intercept is 0.15 and this is statistically significant. Um, here is a summary effect size down here, the diamond, and then we can see how that roughly approximates the um, the effect sizes that we have, which was, which was a mixture of studies which were significant um, because they weren't crossing zero or the, um, the, the confidence intervals were not crossing zero and studies that crossed it as well. Most of them were positive. Some of them were negative, but most of them were positive. But overall, the summary effect size estimate was 0.15. So those are our results here. And then if we do want to look at um, Egger's regression test, we can click here. And this gives us the same result that I showed you previously. And it's going to calculate Egger's regression test. But like I said before, this is not a measure of publication bias. This is just a measure, firstly, of funnel plot asymmetry, but secondly, of, um, uh, of small study bias as well. So that's what we have there. Um, the other thing we can also do is we can construct a funnel plot as well. Here we go. So visually, yeah, sure. You can look at that and say there is not that much asymmetry um, and our intuitions are confirmed by uh, Egger's regression test here. So we can run this in uh, R as well. Um, so let us fire up R, we'll clear the environment. We're gonna be using metaphor as well for doing our meta-analysis. We'll load that, have a look at the data. This is exactly the same as what we had um, previously in JASP, same data set. And then what we're doing here is with uh, with this function, the ESCalc function, what we're doing is we are calculating the effect sizes and variances. Um, we're actually um, converting it to Fisher's Z because Pearson's R can be biased, especially um, at, uh, at, at extreme values. So we're converting this to Fisher Z. And of course, at the end, you can back convert it to Pearson's R if you like as well. Um, we're going to be also, this is, um, this is a function which essentially is the square root of the variance, which is the effect size standard error. So we're going to run this as well and put this in the data frame because that's what we did for the point and click stuff. And then we will run the analysis here and we can see the values are exactly the same. They are exactly the same, and so, and so they should be. Um, of course, if you do use different um, uh, heterogeneity estimators, you might get slightly different results. And a common error within meta-analysis in JASP is that people put the measure of variance in as the effect size standard error, and these things are going to be different. So that's why you're going to get different outcomes, and it's important to actually calculate the effect size standard error, either by calculating... Um, there's the square root of the variance one by one or doing it in R or doing it in some sort of online calculator. So the results are the same, 0.1499. There we go, rounding error, 0.15. The heterogeneity estimates are the same as well. We have tau squared, 0 0.008, tau squared, 0 0.008. Um, it's exactly the same formula, so that's why we get exactly the same outcomes. So in order to actually get the same thing, just make sure you are using the same heterogeneity estimator. So we have our classical meta-analysis, but we don't have a measure of publication bias. So let's open up the selection models module within JASP, and we're going to put in effect size. Effect size standard error here. 
and it is going to do its thing. And I'm also going to add this option for mean model estimates. Okay, first thing we're interested in is the test of heterogeneity. So this tells us that the, um, the effects are, um, there's significant heterogeneity, which is what we got with our classical meta-analysis. And there's two tests of publication bias, one assuming homogeneity and one assuming heterogeneity. And because of this test, this is the one we're going to go with. So remember, our previous Eggers regression test, the p-value was 0.3. So you, would, so you would conclude, so many people will conclude there was no evidence of publication bias. But here we can actually see that the test of publication bias, assuming heterogeneity, is on the threshold of statistical significance. So you would, it was, it's, it's very close. And I wouldn't say it's as clear cut as if you were going to use Eggers regression test as, as a measure there. Um, but what's more interesting is actually seeing how the effect size adjusts in the presence of publication bias. What a lot of people do when it comes to doing power analysis, for instance, is they use the results from a previous meta-analysis to estimate what the average effect of a research field is. Um, I've got other videos suggesting that's not really a good, a good idea. You should do a power, power analysis for what you want to discover instead of what other people have reported. But the problem with meta-analysis is that because of publication bias, these effects are often inflated. So by looking at um, a publication bias adjusted effect size, we can actually see and get a more realistic effect size. So when we go down to our random effects estimates, we can see unadjusted is our previous unadjusted effect size, which is 0.149. And when we adjust it, it goes down to 0.9. So it shrinks quite a fair bit and visualizing it by clicking on mean model estimates, we can actually see that this is also on the threshold of statistical significance. Whereas before you would say, you know what, there's quite a... Um, uh, th th there seems to be at least evidence of a relationship between these two variables. Uh, but when you actually account for publication bias, this relationship is a lot more tenuous. The confidence intervals are quite a lot, uh, quite a lot wider and uh, they almost cross zero as well. So here we've actually, um, most importantly, we've calculated this um, adjusted random effects estimate. Now let's do the same calculation in R. So um, this is called the weight function as well within the weight R package. I'll put all the code online, so don't worry about that. And here we simply enter the measure of the effect size measure and the effect size variance here, which we've calculated previously from our script up here. So let's run this. And here it is exactly the same information. It's, it's structured in a different way, but the exact same information information is there so we have the um the adjusted effect which is the same as what we got in the software because it's based on the same code and then we also have our original uh, estimate as well and then we also have our test of publication bias as before it was 0 0.08 which is traditionally seen to be on the threshold of statistical significance now, if you don't want to use JASP for some reason, or you don't like using R, you can also use um, an online version of the weight R package. So let's go have a look. We have our data uploaded, and then we can say, uh, yes, there's a header, um, it's comma separated, and then we can select the variable containing our effect size, which is this one here, and our variable with the sample variances, which is here. Um, and then we can run our calculation and again this gives us the same results so you can do this online it shows you the unadjusted effect and it shows you the adjusted effect as well and the test of publication bias so i hope that was handy um, again check all the scripts and data files in the comments